Beloved TV actor and director Tony Dowd died today. He was best known for playing the older brother Wally Cleaver in the iconic series Leave it to Beaver. In a world where fame often masks the hidden struggles of those we admire, the death of Tony Dow has left many in shreds due to his iconic roles and contributions to television history. Just a year after his loss, his wife spoke out. What compelled her to break her year-long silence and what revelations does she hold regarding the events surrounding his death? Join us as we delve into the heartfelt revelations surrounding Tony Dow's life and the reflections that endure in his absence. The stroke of luck that accompanied Tony. Featuring in the famous comedy Leave It to Beaver as Wally, Tony Dow Dow's portrayal, along with his unique body, made him a heartthrob and helped the play achieve legendary status. His sincere, down-to-earth personality drew him to both fans and co-workers. According to him, he's been instructed what to do since he was about 11 or 12. He further claimed that he was informed on set and at home, which made him have little or less control over his life. However, Tony tragically died a year ago, leaving behind a lasting impact. Several individuals came up to offer their respects, recalling the time they had to work with him. What about the lady he spent 42 years with? And what has kept her silent all these years? Keep an eye out for his wife's first public statement a year after his death. Born on April 13, 1945, and growing up in the bustling Hollywood area of Los Angeles, Tony Dow began with a combination of athleticism, talent, and opportunity. His parents, Muriel Virginia and John Stevens Dow, instilled in him drive and tenacity from a young age. His mother, a former Max Senate bathing beauty, gained success as a body double for Clara Bow, the renowned silent cinema star, before temporarily working as a stunt woman in Western films. Meanwhile, his father was passionate about design and construction, methodically crafting, building and renovating residences. The two of them created a rich backdrop for Tony's entry into the entertainment industry. His early years were defined by a strong desire to swim and dive. His devotion to these activities won him the title of Junior Olympics Diving Champion, demonstrating his inherent ability to be physically fit and disciplined. Dow's early years were not dominated by thoughts of celebrity, as is common in Hollywood. Instead, he focused his talents on athletics, However, fate had different intentions when an unexpected chance came at his door in 1956. At the age of 11, he was forced into the world of auditions, spurred by a lifeguard with his own goals. Dow was cast as the lifeguard's kid in Johnny Wildlife, a family adventure television show after auditioning. Despite the show's eventual failure, Tony opted to take a chance despite having little acting experience, having only performed on stage and in two television pilots. He attended an open casting call and luck intervened, landing him the famous part of Wally Cleaver in the cherished series Leave It to Beaver. Tony's depiction of Wally Cleaver, the archetypal all-American youth, struck a chord with viewers throughout the country. From 1957 until 1963, he portrayed Wally, the trustworthy elder brother of the charming protagonist, Theodore Beaver Cleaver, played by Jerry Mathers. Wally's character, based on the son of series creator Joe Connolly, was a beacon of brilliance, civility, and charm, admired by parents, classmates, and instructors alike. Tony Dow's remarkable sitcom show. Tony's appearance on Leave It to Beaver propelled him into the spotlight, converting him into a heartthrob sensation. Tony's boyish charm and athletic frame helped him become a mainstay in adolescent publications, where he portrayed Wally and captivated readers. The show's creators took advantage of Tony's fame, creating episodes about Wally's romantic exploits, part-time jobs, friendships, and adventures with his beloved vehicle. Leave It to Beaver was a beloved American television sitcom that portrayed the everyday exploits of a suburban family and their network of friends, entertaining viewers since its inception. This timeless series featured a stellar cast, including Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dow, and Jerry Mathers, affectionately known as The Beaver. Originally introduced to viewers by Columbia Broadcasting System on October 4, 1957, the show suffered an initial setback when it was canceled after its first season. 
However, the American Broadcasting Company saw its promise and took it under its wing, broadcasting it for another five years, from October 2, 1958, until June 20, 1963. It's remarkable to note that scheduling issues and shifting between four distinct time slots from Wednesday to Saturday evenings didn't stop the success of the show. Leave It to Beaver gained ongoing success through repeats, capturing new generations with its clean comedy and realistic family dynamics. During the peak of Leave It to Beaver, Tony Dow earned an impressive $1.500 per episode. This was a substantial amount for that era, and considering the show's success, Dow enjoyed a consistent source of income. At the core of the comedy are the charming mishaps of young Theodore Beaver Cleaver, played by the great Jerry Mathers. Navigating a world that is sometimes perplexing and nonsensical, Beaver finds himself in entertaining situations that captivate viewers of all ages. His family earned the show's backbone with strong yet loving parents, Ward and June Cleaver, also known as Hugh Beaumont and Barbara Billingsley, respectively. Beaver's nickname, which originated from a mispronunciation by his elder brother, Wally, adds a sense of fun and warmth to the family dynamic. Beaver's pals, especially Larry Mondello and later Gilbert Bates, added to the fun and camaraderie. The iconic characters Miss Canfield, Miss Landers, and Mrs. Rayburn provide direction and support during the ups and downs of youth. As the series progressed, viewers saw the Cleaver boys grow and develop, with Wally transitioning from a popular and accomplished high school athlete to a young man navigating the complexities of adolescence with his loyal friends, including the affable but hapless Clarence Lumpy Rutherford and the cunning Eddie Haskell. Wally's trip is full of fun, love, and important life lessons. After his professional breakthrough with Leave It to Beaver, Dow worked on a variety of television shows demonstrating his flexibility as an actor. He made notable cameos on famous series such as My Three Sons, Dr. Kildare, Knight Rider, and Emergency, creating an everlasting impression in each part he played. However, Dow's adventure took an unexpected turn when duty beckoned. During the tumult of the Vietnam War, he suspended his acting career to serve in the California Army National Guard from 1965 to 1968. Dow was sent to the Special Services Division, where he used his creative abilities as a photographer to help the war cause with commitment and heroism. Dow's love of the arts remained unwavering even after he stopped acting. Throughout the 1970s, he matched his acting career with work in the construction sector, as well as studies in journalism and cinema. Tony Dow's biggest projects. Dow's comic abilities were shown in a great spoof in the Kentucky Fried movie. This indie anthology sketch dark comedy released in 1977 was full of chuckles and surprising twists. Produced by Kim Jorgensen, Larry Castro, and Robert Weiss, and expertly directed by the renowned John Landis, this treasure features a star-studded ensemble that includes Tony Dow, George Lazenby, Bill Bixby, Henry Gibson, and many more. The film's genesis was nothing short of spectacular, thanks to the brilliant brains of David Zucker, Jim Abrahams, and Jerry Zucker. In this parody, they devised a series of delightfully unrelated sketches mocking numerous cinema genres, ranging from exploitation pictures to catastrophe films and everything in between. One of the film's highlight pieces is A Fistful of Yen, a hilarious satire of early kung fu flicks with grandiose combat sequences and over-the-top characters. Meanwhile, trailers for imaginary films such as Cleopatra Schwartz and Catholic High School Girls in Trouble offer a light-hearted look into the world of black exploitation and softcore pornography. However, the Kentucky Fried movie's satirical gaze extends beyond the film business. The skit See You Next Wednesday mocks theater gimmicks such as Sense Around, while advertisements, news broadcasts, and classroom didactic videos are all treated comedically. Behind the scenes, the path to getting the Kentucky Fried movie to the big screen was as fun as the movie itself. Despite being rejected by Hollywood studios, the dedicated trio of Zucker, Abrahams, and Zucker refused to give up on their idea. They eventually took matters into their own hands, sponsoring a 10-minute clip of the film, which piqued the interest of exhibitor Kim Jorgensen. 
Jorgensen was impressed with what he saw and pushed attempts to get financing for the full-length version, which eventually led to the film's release to critical acclaim and box office success. The reactions to the Kentucky Fried movie have been as diverse as they are hilarious. While some commentators applauded its anarchic energy and irreverent humor, others objected to its childish sensibilities. Nonetheless, the picture has become a cult classic, with its distinct style of comedy continuing to captivate audiences decades after its premiere. Whether you appreciate slapstick humor, witty satire, or simply a good chuckle, the Kentucky Fried Movie guarantees an amazing movie experience that is both amusing and timeless. Dow's second biggest project, however, was yet to emerge. Tony's resurgence began with Beaver Comes Back in the 1980s when he revisited his beloved character in a series of reunion projects ranging from a television movie to a sequel series titled The New Leave It to Beaver. Tony delighted fans with his reprisal of Wally Cleaver, even venturing into script writing for the show. The New Leave It to Beaver carried on the tradition of the popular original series, the show's journey began with a heartfelt 1983 reunion television movie. Nonetheless, the sitcom continues to enchant viewers with its ageless appeal and charming characters. Tony Dow established his place as a cherished TV classic with Beaver Comes Back and the new Leave It to Beaver, leaving an unforgettable impression on generations of fans. Beaver, which aired to acclaim on the Columbia Broadcasting System in March 1983, paved the way for a reunion, which led to a full-fledged revival series. It was also named Still the Beaver, which found its home on the Disney Channel from 1984 to 1985 as the series gained momentum. It found a new audience on Turner Broadcasting System, where it aired until June 19, 1989, alongside a concurrent run in first-run syndication during the 1988 to 1989 season. At its core, the new Leave It to Beaver centered around the lives of Wally Cleaver, played by Tony Da as always, and his younger brother Theodore Beaver Cleaver as they navigated adulthood and family life. Beaver found himself divorced and back living with his widowed mother, June Cleaver, along with his two sons, Kip and Oliver, while P.A. resided next door with his wife, Mary Ellen, their daughter, Kelly, and later their son, Kevin. The absence of Hugh Beaumont, who portrayed Ward Cleaver in the original series, was felt as his character Ward had passed away in the narrative prior to the premiere of the reunion telemovie. The 1983 telemovie paid homage to Bont's memory, dedicating the production to him. Joining the ensemble cast were familiar faces from the original series, including Wally's old pal Eddie Haskell, played by Ken Osmond, and Lumpy Rutherford, portrayed by Frank Bank, alongside a new generation of characters such as Beaver's sons and Wall's children, all adding depth to the storyline. Notably, Diane Brewster returned for a handful of episodes to reprise her role as Miss Canfield Beaver's former grade school teacher, now the principal of Grant Avenue School. Each episode of the new Leave It to Beaver unfolded with heartwarming family moments, humorous mishaps, and nostalgic callbacks to the original series, capturing the essence of family life in a changing world from its humble beginnings as a television movie to its evolution into a beloved revival series. Tony Da projected during his heyday at the peak of the sitcom's popularity. He found himself inundated with over a thousand fan letters every week. Years later, Jerry Mathers Dow's co-star reminisced about their time together, describing Dow as resembling his on-screen persona. He was cool, collected, and effortlessly suave. Not only did Dow possess acting prowess, but he also dazzled with his gymnastic abilities, often impressing the cast and crew by effortlessly navigating flights of stairs on his hands. Transitioning from child stardom to adulthood, Tony faced a lot of challenges and found himself exploring different avenues to sustain his career during the 1970s. He found solace on the dinner theater circuit, honing his craft and entertaining audiences across the country. However, fate had more in store for him. 
A visionary producer conceived the idea of reuniting DA and Matters for a production of Boeing in Kansas City, Missouri. To their amazement, the duo encountered packed theaters and adoring crowds, igniting a newfound interest in their talents. Their success on the stage paved the way for a triumphant return to television in 1983. Dow, alongside Mathers and other surviving members of the original Leave it to Beaver cast, starred in the Column the Second A Broadcasting System television movie reunion. Still the Beaver, the storyline delved into the lives of the beloved Cleaver family with Wally thriving as a successful lawyer. The movie was met with overwhelming praise and spurred the creation of two sitcoms. Beyond Tony Dow's journey acting, Tony ventured into directing, leaving an indelible mark. With his creative vision, he helmed episodes of popular shows like Coach Babylon 5 and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. These movies showcased his multifaceted talents behind the camera as a testament to his enduring legacy. Tony received the former Child Star Lifetime Achievement Award from the Young Artist Foundation in 1987, honoring his contributions to the entertainment industry. Additionally, he co-produced notable projects like The Adventures of Captain Zoom in Outer Space, which came from Outer Space 2, further solidifying his imprint on the cinematic landscape. Tony D.A.'s journey from a budding athlete in Hollywood to a revered actor, director, and producer exemplifies the power of passion, perseverance, and talent in shaping a remarkable career in entertainment. In his struggle with mental health in his 20s, he embarked on a journey that led him down a path of introspection, because that's when he began to struggle with clinical depression. Reflecting on his journey, Tony attributed a portion of his struggle to genetic inheritance, acknowledging a familial predisposition to the illness. However, he also acknowledged the influence of his role in Leave it to Beaver, suggesting that the show's success contributed to a set of expectations that proved challenging to reconcile with reality. Venturing back into acting served as a double-edged sword, making his inner turmoil much worse. Despite his versatility in portraying diverse characters, casting agents struggled to dissociate him from his wholesome image as Wally Cleaver, hindering his professional prospects. The pervasive silence surrounding Tony's mental health issues further compounded his personal battle, leaving him to feelings of worthlessness and despair in solitude for an extended period of time. It wasn't until he approached the age of 40 that he found a semblance of stability, thanks in part to advancements in pharmacological treatments. Evolving his role as a mental health advocate, he highlighted the universality of depression, emphasizing that no one is immune to its grasp, not even an err. While a television icon like Wally Cleaver diversifying his artistic pursuits offered solace and a renewed sense of purpose. Transitioning from acting, he found fulfillment as a sculptor, showcasing his creations in galleries and exhibitions worldwide beyond the confines of Hollywood. This helped him to get dedicated to destigmatizing mental health issues. He further leverages his platform to raise awareness and foster understanding through candid discussions and public addresses. As he sought to dismantle the barriers of silence and shame that often shroud depression, Tony offered hope and solidarity to those with similar mental challenges. Tony Dow's art career. In addition to acting, directing, producing, and writing, Dow was a sculptor, creating abstract bronze sculptures. He once claimed that the figures he produced are abstract and not meant to represent reality, but rather the truth of the interactions as he sees and feels them. In December 2008, Dow was chosen as one of three sculptors to show at the Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts exhibition, located in the Carousel de Louvre in Paris, France. He represented the United States delegation which was composed of artists from the Karen Lynn Gallery. His sculpture shown at the Parisian shopping mall was titled Unarmed Warrior, a bronze figure of a woman holding a shield. In recounting his journey, he underscored the transformative power of resilience and self-discovery in his personal life. His initial marriage to Carol Marlowe culminated in divorce. However, in 1980, he found love again when he tied the knot with Lauren Shulkin. 
Their story began when Lauren, who was working for an advertising firm at the time, was looking for an all-American actress for a McDonald's commercial. In addition to his spouse, he leaves behind a son from a prior marriage. Reflecting on his legendary depiction of Wally Mathers, Christopher, together with his brother and beloved granddaughter, said that Dow's personality penetrated the character. In an insightful interview with the Kansas City, Dow spoke about his modest upbringing and manner. In 2003, Dow explored the fascinating aspects of meeting celebrities, including the story of an experience he had on an airplane. He had met with a face on the plane whom he recognized later as the renowned Harlem Globetrotter Meadowlark. The interaction caused Dow to have a revelation as he struggled with the tremendous but mysterious effects of recognition. Dow was struck by the comforting familiarity that surrounded him and a surge of feeling that was characterized by a clear sense of connection. He was ecstatic at being recognized, even though it was done in a low-key and humble way, making him so happy. These little moments of attention gave him comfort while he struggled with the complications of stardom. It served as a constant reminder of the significance of his contributions. Outside of Hollywood's glamour and flash, Dow welcomed the real relationships that were made possible by his depiction as Wally Cleaver. He won over audiences all over the globe with his quiet charm and approachable demeanor, permanently altering popular culture. On July 27, 2022, Tony Dodd died at his Tanga, California home when he passed away. He died at 77 years old. His manager, Frank Batt, verified that complications from liver cancer were the cause of death. This was later reported by Tony's management staff one day earlier. Frank Bala and Renee James, who oversaw the 77-year-old actor's management, claimed that an update on his social media site exposed a serious miscommunication about his health. Lauren Shulkind, the actor's wife, was acclaimed to have informed them of her husband's passing under the false impression that he had died. The statement also said that Tony's daughter-in-law, Melissa, and son, Christopher, were by his side and would be sending updates on his health. Few hours later, Christopher released a statement about Tony, who was receiving hospital care and was at the brink of his life. It's interesting to note that the actor's social media platforms had deleted the early Facebook statement on his purported death. According to the hospital, after spending almost a full day in the emergency department, Tony was admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. He was later discharged when his COVID-19 test result was negative. The 77-year-old actor received around five coronavirus tests throughout this journey before being admitted to the emergency department. His wife, Lauren, clarified the difficult situation during a chat pointing out that the increase of the Delta version had made the hospital bed scarcity worse. She also thanked everyone for their expression of concern. According to Lauren, Tony's health was improving. Surprisingly, despite Tony's pneumonia, the doctors thought he would be discharged in a week. This was because he was suffering from a strong cough that was making his head hurt. He described the therapy procedure and, astonishingly, did not have a temperature throughout the experience. Lauren pointed out how many IVs were used and marveled at the body's capacity to survive on intravenous fluids alone. Despite the physical difficulties, Lauren bemoaned the toll the treatment had on Tony's arms, which were left scarred and abused. Tony's regular walks around the halls with his nurse helped him to stay optimistic, but the coughing fit never went away, indicating that time and patience would be needed for recovery. Lauren acknowledged the medical team's committed efforts during Tony's treatment journey and conveyed her thanks for their kind care. This provided insight into Tony's personal problems throughout his health issues and emphasized the need of resiliency support and the relentless work of medical experts. Shul Kin, in a bid to be private, concealed a lot of information from the media regarding her personal life that is easily accessible. Nonetheless, the 75-years-old wife of Tony was acknowledged as a gifted mosaic artist when Tony died. She was acclaimed to have risen to fame after being married to the New York City native. 
According to the claims, when Shulin and Tony first met in 1978 in Kansas City, they quickly became romantically involved. They courted for three years before getting married in 1980, which was the start of their 42-year marriage. Together, they welcomed one son. Unverified reports from May 2022 said that Dow and Shulkind were shocked to hear of his cancer diagnosis, even though they did not specify the exact kind of disease. The pair were obviously shocked to learn of the actor's passing on July 26th when he posted a health update on Facebook. According to reporter George Panico, Christopher voiced his anxiety about the misunderstanding and his father's declining health. Lauren conveyed her extreme grief and sadness at the misunderstanding regarding Tony's health issues. She claimed that Tony had been getting hospice care at their house in the months before his death. This shows that when Lauren assumed Tony was about to die because of certain health difficulties, it was definitely a miscommunication. In her chat with Pinaco, this misconception swiftly spread among her close friends overnight. Given that Tony's death had been extensively published throughout the globe, Lauren acknowledged that she felt stupid about the situation. She then accepted responsibility for the misunderstanding and put it down to what she did. In the wake of Tony's death, the official statement thanked the fans for their love and support, citing one fan's feeling that Tony was loved by everybody. The family asked for privacy after the news as they processed their loss in the weeks before. The pair had conveyed their deep sorrow for the difficult circumstances and thanked everyone in advance for their well wishes. This unanticipated development emphasizes how difficult it may be to manage health issues and the significant effects they can have on loved ones. In a moving remembrance to his old buddy Dow, Jerry Mathers reflected on his common experiences with Tony both on and off screen. He expressed his profound sadness on Facebook after learning of his demise. He further spoke about Tony Dow as a beloved traveling companion in life, as well as a television brother. Jerry also claimed that the sudden death of Tony grieved the media as they pondered on his unending generosity, which has left an irreplaceable emptiness in his heart. Their age-long relationship, which lasted more than 60 years, was characterized by treasured memories and common experiences. While the world was in mourning, Mathers and his wife Teresa sent their deepest sympathies to Tony's wife Lauren, his family, and everyone he impacted. The demise of a bright star was felt across the planet. Mathers took comfort in the thought that the skies had attracted yet another devotee, Another sad chapter in the history of the program was closed with the deaths of Bont in 1982 and Billingsley in 2010. In 2020, Ken Osmond, who played Wall's naughty best buddy, Eddie Haskell, passed away, adding to the feeling of loss and joined Mathers in remembering Tony. The late actor, Brian Wilson, a legend from the late 1960s, sent a heartfelt photo of himself along with his sympathies Legend Jerry Lawler speaking on behalf of the wrestling world and many others honored Dow by considering his significant achievements and enduring legacy. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos before you leave.